So I've seen a lot of fear going around lately online about how the FBI has hacked Bitcoin in the latest colonial pipeline incident. A lot of people are wondering, hey, is the Bitcoin protocol safe? You know, is it safe for me to hold my funds in this cryptocurrency? Well, I'm going to talk about that in this video, explain exactly what's happened, because if you haven't seen the gas prices, especially in the United States, have gone up quite a bit over the last month. This is one of the reasons why we've seen politicians come out talking about this, saying, oh, hey, you know, we told you like Bitcoin is just used by criminals. And of course, a lot of people are just wondering, like, is it safe for you to hold your money in Bitcoin cryptocurrency at all? So I'm going to talk about in this video as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis, what you need to understand about this. And what you need to watch out for. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to how to become a blockchain master step by step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's take a look at all the major players in this scenario and actually outline how the incident happened in case you haven't been following the news, or maybe it's like too confusing to see, you know, how this happened in the first place. So we'll start off with the victim of the attack. Okay, this was Colonial Pipeline, which is a company who transports uh, gasoline and jet fuel across the United States. Okay. And then who actually committed the attack? Well, it's a ransomware group called the Dark Side. Okay. So the thing I have to understand about the dark side is that they launched an affiliate program where essentially you can just hire them to perform a ransomware attack and they'll take a percentage of the proceeds and they'll just, you know, give you the rest. OK, this is the person who essentially initiated uh, this particular attack with the dark side. OK, so that's how it works. So basically the affiliate hires the dark side. The dark side uh, commits a ransomware attack on the colonial pipeline. And so let's just stop there. What is a ransomware attack? Well, essentially, this is where you take some malicious software and put it on their computers and it demands a ransom that you have to pay or else something bad happens. It's, it's a threat, essentially. And so that's exactly what happened here. The affiliate hires a dark side. The dark side puts ransomware on the software systems of the Colonial Pipeline, demanding a 75 Bitcoin ransom or else they face these major consequences. And, you know, during this time, you know, what happened? Well, Colonial Pipeline shut down a lot of their infrastructure as a safety precaution. That's one of the reasons that we saw gas prices, like actual automobile gasoline prices, you know, shoot up during this time. And eventually, you know, they just paid the ransom here. So 75 Bitcoin, and then, you know, dark side takes their cut and the affiliate gets paid out 63, about 63.5 Bitcoin. Or it's actually 63.7. And he has 75 BTC here. All right, so now that's happened. The affiliate has received their Bitcoin and the dark side's received their cut. And here's where the FBI comes into play. And so this is what ha has people worried is that the FBI actually is able to recover this 63.7 Bitcoin here. And this is what's got people freaked out. They're saying, hey, did they like hack into their Bitcoin wallet? Did they crack the encryption? Are my Bitcoin safe? Did they just like take down the the entire Bitcoin blockchain. Well, let's actually look at the official report put out by the Department of Justice to see what they said. So they said by reviewing the Bitcoin public ledger, law enforcement was able to track multiple transfers of Bitcoin and identify approximately 63.7 Bitcoin re representing the proceeds of the victim's ransom payment had been transferred to a specific address for which the FBI has the private key or the rough equivalent of a password needed to access assets accessible from the Bitcoin address. So that's key here. So basically what happened here is Bitcoin was transferred around through the blockchain and the FBI was actually able to trace each of these transactions and tie it back to a source that contained, you know, all 63.7 Bitcoin. And if we take the report at face value here, they're saying they were able to actually access the private key to that particular wallet, not necessarily crack the encryption for that particular wallet. And so this is an important distinction and I want to break this down and kind of talk about like what people think happened and, you know, what might have happened and what I personally think probably happened, okay? So a lot of people are wondering that the wallet that this person had was basically cracked and that, you know, if you own Bitcoin and you hold it in a wallet that, you know, now you don't have confidence in the actual technology itself to keep your funds safe. But I think this is like not even close to what happened. I'm like 99.99999% sure that this did not happen. I'll talk about why here in a minute. So let's talk about what might have happened because we don't have clear details. You know, the Department of Justice report says they got access to the private key, but we don't exactly know how. They were able to trace the Bitcoin and where it actually ended up. We'll talk about 
about that here in a minute and why that's really important to understand. But how they actually were able to recover the funds could be a few ways. So one way is that the wallet was actually compromised. So the Bitcoin that they stored in their wallet, maybe that wallet itself was compromised and it could be through a few different means. So if you have something like a hot wallet on a computer, maybe you have a browser extension that holds your Bitcoin. Maybe you have some sort of app on your desktop. Maybe that device could be seized by the authorities and then they can get access to your Bitcoin that way. Or maybe if you use a hardware wallet to also authenticate your transfers, you know, they could seize that device as well. So anybody who has the thing that controls your private keys would then have access to your funds as well. They say the private key was obtained, but they don't exactly say how. Or maybe you store your seed phrase in some sort of password manager or you store your private key in some sort of password manager. Maybe they're able to access the device that contains that information. That's what I mean here by a potential device being compromised. So another possibility is that some sort of external account that they store their funds on was seized or, you know, subpoenaed, had access to somehow. So what I mean by this is maybe this person tried to cash out on an exchange where they have a username and password. Maybe that exchange was forced to comply with authorities in this investigation and actually, you know, give them access to the user's funds. Maybe the exchange complied and froze the funds. We don't really know for sure. But something like one of these scenarios, I think, is what was most likely to happen. And I don't think that Bitcoin security itself was actually compromised. So here's why. So Bitcoin uses something called public key cryptography, where basically you have a private key, which acts like your password to your wallet. And then you have, you know, a public key or a representation of a public key that's like your address, which is sort of like your, you know, your username. So like your username and your password. Think about it that way with Bitcoin. Now this cryptography in play here is incredibly powerful. Okay. It's extremely robust and it stood the test of time over 10 years. And it's this very similar level of cryptography that powers a lot of the rest of the internet. Okay. And so up to this point, Bitcoin hasn't really been cracked and this cryptography hasn't been compromised. The only real threats that we possibly see for this type of encryption are quantum computing, for example. But I've actually made videos on my channel in the past about why I don't think that, you know, quantum computers are an existential threat to cryptocurrencies anytime soon. And one of the reasons for that, let's just say that, you know, the U.S. government actually had a sophisticated quantum computer that could crack Bitcoin, maybe some other type of way to crack Bitcoin wallets and recover funds like in a hack right here. Okay, so let's think about that. If they could why on earth would they want to take down Bitcoin, let alone recover you know, this reward of 63.7 Bitcoin, which at the time of the recovery was only a little over $2 million? Okay, why on earth would they want to show their cards that they have this type of capability just to recover this small sum of money? Because think about it, if you're a major superpower and you possess a secret weapon to you know crack nuclear codes, for example, of other foreign nations... Why on earth would you let other people know that you have that power just to get back a few million dollars from this incident? Like that's nowhere near a big enough reason to pull out that type of force, okay? Even Bitcoin, you know, being over a trillion dollar asset at its peak is still not enough of a reason for somebody to pull out that type of force because you'd probably want to save it for something that was way more important than that. And so that's why I don't think that, you know, Bitcoin as a whole, the actual technology is actually compromised or anything like that. And so for that reason, I don't think anybody really needs to worry. Okay. So that being said, as always, there are considerable security measures that you must take in order if you're going to self custody any sizable amount of cryptocurrency that you don't want to lose. And there's always vulnerabilities and trade offs with each method, right? If you introduce something else into the equation besides just essentially keeping your private key and storing your Bitcoin that way, there's always other points of failure, whether you store on a hardware wallet or you store it in a hot wallet, like on your desktop or in your browser, or you keep it on an exchange. There's different trade-offs for each of these, and you have to understand that. So those things could have potential vulnerabilities in them, but the actual Bitcoin protocol itself doesn't have the kind of vulnerabilities I think people are inferring from this particular scenario. So let's talk about another thing, which is the actual Bitcoin privacy, because this is something that has a lot of people confused. They think, oh, I thought Bitcoin was a private network. You know, I didn't think that they could track criminals in Bitcoin network. And I see a lot of other people saying like, yeah, but I bought Bitcoin and I took it off an exchange. So like, how is the IRS going to know if I do anything with it? Like I can just evade taxes. Well, it's not really true because if someone wants to find you on the Bitcoin blockchain, you're a big enough fish, then chances are they're probably going to be able to find you. So what's important to understand is Bitcoin is, uh, everybody thinks Bitcoin is anonymous, but it's really, you know, more accurately pseudonymous, which basically means you act under a pseudonym, which is really your account address at this point or, your, or your, a representation of your public key. It's going back to that public key and private key thing that I talked about a minute ago. So all transactions in the Bitcoin blockchain are public. They're on the public ledger. And so you can see any activity 
uh, anytime you transfer Bitcoin from one account to another. So the public ledger is basically made up of all these transactions. And that's how they actually, you know, build your transaction balances by taking the entire history and then figuring out how much Bitcoin you currently have, okay, by Bitcoin received and Bitcoin sent and figuring out the difference. Now, you can take all these transactions and basically trace them from account to account to account. And, you know, there are ways to kind of get sophisticated with Bitcoin to try to like, hide but somebody who really wants to find you most likely can find you you'll see people try to do things like um send bitcoin to exchanges to essentially launder it and then you know withdraw to a different address but the problem with that is if you committed a crime and then they see that your transaction went into an exchange then they could basically force the exchange to comply with some sort of you know warrant and freeze your account and then you're toast all right and there are other like tactics that people try to take to hide their bitcoin transactions transactions, they'll do things like try to send it to a different blockchain, like they can use a bridge to try to bridge it over to Ethereum, they can try to use mixers, they can try to use ThorChain, there's different ways. But at the end of the day, a lot of people who aren't as sophisticated are probably going to get found, especially if they do something really bad. And so you have to think about that here at this beginning scenario, we're talking about the, you know, dark, here's dark side, and here's the affiliate. So the affiliate is someone basically who hired Darkseid to do something way more sophisticated than they ever could, all right? And so there's a high likelihood that this affiliate was not as technically competent as you might think. And of course, they probably got, you know, this Bitcoin and, you know, made some mistakes and their funds were compromised through one of these means, okay? So I think this is a case where it's a lot more of a user error than the problem with the actual technology itself. So like I said, I don't have all the details here. That's just some of my speculation. But the fact that there going into this thinking they were going to walk away with 63.7 Bitcoin free and clear without any problems indicates that they likely didn't anticipate this problem that I'm talking about here that they had to overcome and probably didn't know the methods that they would need to use to try to potentially successfully evade the law in this case. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you know, they were not successful. So in summary here, no, I don't think the Bitcoin blockchain has been compromised in any way. I think that the government was able to seize these funds through other means that the person who actually was responsible for this at the end of the day, this affiliate here probably wasn't as technically sophisticated as they think they were uh, and basically just got caught. And this is why, and this is some things that you need to understand, not saying that you're going to do anything uh, nefarious on the internet internet necessarily, but you have to understand that, you know, your potential the different ways that you store your own Bitcoin have, you know, different risks associated with them. And if you ever get the desire to think that you can do something bad on the internet without people finding you with Bitcoin, then definitely think twice. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm that really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to hit the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step, start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.